This presentation will show how mapping and the information developed using geographic information systems, known generally as GIS, can provide valuable information about the likely impact of flooding in Queensland. It will also showcase some of the resources that are available for you that may assist in your own flood resilience planning. There are two main types of flood-related mapping. The first is historical floods, maps that show the extent of past flooding. On the left, you can see an area that was mapped from the April 2011 floods at Roma. The other main type is flood risk mapping. This is predictive mapping and estimates the extent of flooding based on scenarios. The map on the right, which is the same area as covered in the historical map, shows the likely extent of a 1% AEP flood event. I'll explain this term later. But as you can see, the uh, estimated extent is very similar to that recorded in the historical flood. The Queensland Flood Mapping Program was established by the Queensland Government after the 2011 floods to deliver fit-for-purpose flood mapping. It was developed working closely with a large range of stakeholders, including council staff, hydrologists, land use planners, and emergency management experts. The use of fit-for-purpose maps is a result of recognising that all, not all communities require the same level of mapping to ascertain their flood risk. The program identified three levels of mapping, namely Level 1, which is the statewide mapping based on basins and floodplains developed through the application of a consistent statewide methodology. The result was the production of the Queensland floodplain assessment overlay. Level two, this is town-based mapping that focuses on lower growth towns. And level three, which is the comprehensive mapping that is required for densely populated higher growth centres and more complicated areas such as coastal communities. The Queensland floodplain assessment overlay shows the floodplain areas within the drainage sub basins in Queensland. It has been developed for use by local governments as a guide to potential flood hazard areas and shows an estimate of areas potentially at threat of inundation by flooding. The overlay data has been developed through a process of drainage subbasin analysis using data sources including the 10 metre contours, historical flood records, vegetation and soil mapping and satellite imagery. This overlay data was an initial assessment and has been refined and added to with basin level modelling in some areas. It is produced by the Department of Natural Resources and Mines and Energy and is available through QSpatial, the Queensland Spatial Catalogue, as well as other online tools, which we'll cover later. This property-based mapping is part of a trial project helping a small number of primary producers initially to mitigate their flood risk. The mapping contains several elements. The smaller flood hazard context map uses the Queensland floodplain assessment overlay, along with a 1% AEP basin level study. The AEP stands for Annual Exceedance Probability and represents the chance of a flood of a given size being equaled or exceeded in any one year. For example, if a specified peak flood discharge has an AEP of 1%, this means there is a 1% chance, or 1 in 100 chance, of that peak discharge being equaled or exceeded in the year. The second and larger map features satellite imagery overlaid with a derived slope layer in this case, the bank of the watercourse becomes quite prominent. These maps were generated for each property in the trial and supported the development of customised risk mitigation and management plans. If you're interested in exploring flood mapping in your area, there are many resources that are publicly available and usually free. The Flood Check interactive mapping application gives you access to flood models and data developed to improve the understanding of flood behaviour on a regional scale. The online map lets you view the likely extent of floodplains, areas adjacent to rivers and streams experience flooding, and historic floodlines where they have been recorded. You can also access reports, basin and town flood studies, as well as the broad scale Queensland floodplain assessment overlay. It is very flood focused, so if you want flood information and other spatial data, then the Queensland Globe might be for you. The Queensland Globe allows you to access hundreds of spatial data layers on Queensland's roads, property and land parcels, topography, mining and exploration, land valuations, natural resources like vegetation, water, soils and so on, as well as the previously mentioned flood layers. 
You can use it to explore topics of interest and add your own data or share what you have discovered with others. You can print maps out as a PDF or a PNG image. You can also create an account and save your work for ongoing use or export it to other platforms. It is quite a comprehensive online spatial tool and is free to use. Many local governments also offer online mapping platforms that may have better data for some areas, particularly along the coastal zone. The two shown here are the Bundaberg Regional Council and Moreton Bay Regional Council, but they are just a couple of examples. Check out your own local government's website. If they don't have an online mapping platform, they may have prepared flood maps that you can download. Geosciences Australia also has a flood risk portal that provides access to various information about floods and what sort of data is available for your area of interest and how you can access it. This resource may be useful if you need information on areas outside of Queensland. These are just some of the resources that are freely available and are a starting point for how mapping can help with flood resilience planning. Thank you for your attention.